Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, a show that examines all aspects of sexuality, from physical to emotional to spiritual. Join our hosts as they discuss age-old questions, common misconceptions, and the latest topics surrounding sex. They'll tackle topics about sexuality from the complicated to the hilarious and everything in between. GSMC Sex Podcast is your show for all of your questions about sex, even some you might not have thought of yet. the Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. I'm your host, John Johnson. And uh, just so that you know, this is the sex edition. I have another podcast that basically uh, covers relationships. And then, you know, sex gets sprinkled in there because it's definitely a part of a relationship. But this one, I talk about sex specifically. And I do it in a way that I think most ears can hear it. If you don't understand it, that's one thing. But I won't be spouting any profanity or anything like that because that's just not my style because I can talk about this to uh, to uh, yeah, at great length. But I'm going to launch into this particular topic of pity sex. That is, and when I think of it, and in the conversations that I've had with people about pity sex, that is the sex that you get because your partner feels pity for you. Meaning, ah, uh, they're just going to give in. They're just going to give it to you to shut you up. And as a guy, I know how guys can complain about things. They can complain about not getting enough. And a lot of guys do. I mean, it's a, it's a chief complaint if because if they're not getting any, then, you know, they feel like they're, they're being deprived of every, everything that, that they connect with their manhood. Now, why would they be denied sex? It could be a lot of reasons. They could be a terrible lover and their partner is just putting up with them because they are in a relationship, to so, so to speak. Now, does it happen to everybody? Probably not. You have a lot of couples out there that, that really don't engage in any sexual activity. I mean, they, they are still together, but they just don't engage in sex. So would they understand this topic? Probably in an intellectual way. But in terms of whatever type of intimacy that they exchange and it's probably hugging and kissing but you know nothing too terribly intimate beyond that but there is no shame there because people work out their agreements inside their relationship and that's that's what happens but back to the topic of pity sex and in the people that I've asked and I've asked a number of people about this I mean I didn't didn't create this focus group but You know, I kind of have a number of individuals that I speak to because they know about the podcast. So they want to ask me, well, what's going on? What's your next topic? And I said, well, this is it. And the topic of pity sex was interesting. Now, of the women that I spoke to, their their take on it was, yeah, they they experience it. And 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 so my question was, well, what are the circumstances in in which it happened? And the the things that kind of came up the most were the guy who complained or put in a request and he felt like he was really in need. He just wanted to make love to his partner and she just sort of gave in, even though she didn't really feel like it. So she didn't do a lot or they, in each one of the cases, I mean, it was sort of universal. Women tend to have this understanding about how they operate in this, this zone. And they didn't do a lot. They were just kind of there for their partner. And then, you know, some of them said, well, they kind of got into it after the fact because they could sense that, you know, their partner was really trying to make an effort because they can see that the guy at first was really thinking only about his need. And then this thing sort of morphed into a little more passion and they finally found their stride and that things happened pretty well together. That wasn't universal, but that happened in, in a number of cases. But one of the other times that one of the ladies had mentioned is that she had done something that had really upset her partner and her way to sort of 
get past the the upset was to be more of a turn on to be real seductive and now i mean would i call that pity sex i don't know that was more like get out of the doghouse sex but in on on her account and it it sort of worked but i kind of thought well it's kind of pitiful that you had to do that but that, that was her way she knew what his vulnerability was and it worked out and Another example of pity sex, you know, I mentioned that the guys that complain that they don't get enough, but it could also be that, you know, your partner feels sorry for you. She could probably be angry and at, and this was another illustration. She was angry at him for something that he did. And, you know, he tried to, to massage the situation by, by being amorous. And it, it, you know, kind of, it was an attempt and it was it was an interesting attempt because you know guys don't normally do it that way. They might run out and try to get some flowers and and chocolates and and, and do it that way. But they, I guess, they had apparently a fairly robust sex life. In what he attempted to do was at least go to the good part, you know, jump to the good part of the relationship and see if that would help her forget. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. So it's not just something that women do for guys. Men can do it for their partners too. Now, one of the things that the guys had mentioned is that, yeah, they kind of describe a situation in which they were the recipient of some pity sex. And it, and it paralleled what women were saying. You know, the guys kind of complained that, hey, you know, they're not getting enough. And, you know, they were begging for it. And then they would get angry or, or at least. And, and, and I don't mean angry like menacing, but they, they would be upset. And I thought, OK, say so if you're not if your partner is not meeting your needs, then are you having a conversation about the problem, which a lot of guys find that this is where the communication comes in. Guys tend to think in the here and now, as opposed to the long range. Let's say go back a week. You might have upset your partner a week ago, and you know they'll re- they'll realize that they haven't had sex in a, in a time frame, but they won't necessarily connect it with something that they did. And this is where I had the conversation with the guy. So, guys, if you're listening to this and you find yourself not being uh, physically intimate with your partner, maybe there's some resistance, some rejection on on her part, then get into the conversation about why that is. And when you break the ice on that, when you get to the problem, I mean, you may not solve it all in one night, but at least if you're in that conversation, that helps ease things and it helps it go the right direction. And it could be a while. I, you know, sometimes these things can turn around in, in minutes, hours, minutes, moments, whatever the, the time frame. because some people respond fairly quickly and others, if the problem is kind of deep seated and you haven't been talking about it, you, you just can't sweep it under the rug. And, and I say that to both partners and I'm kind of directing it to guys because in, in the people that I had spoken to, you know, the guys were talking about receiving the pity sex and then wanting to understand, you know, what she could have been mad about. And I says, well, did you ask? And they had some sort of ruminations about, yeah, yeah, I kind of know. I says, well, did you make up for it? You know, was it something that you could have done better? Was it something that you forgot? Did you forget a birthday? Did you make a promise and not keep it? You know, anything on that scale? Because if if this is a habit and she keeps giving in to you, but, but you don't keep your word, then this is definitely something that's heading towards a cliff. And you're going to have a, a major upset at some point in time. You don't want to keep sweeping things like that under the rug. And I know it calls people to be have a little more integrity with their word. And that could be hard, especially with people who are pleasers. Because one of the situations in, in this guy, he, he tends to be a pleaser. He makes big promises. He wants to do things, but he doesn't necessarily have uh, the, the time and the day to be able to do everything he says. I think sometimes he just really tries to come off as being more of a know-it-all. But what he should more... What he should be more focused on is making less promises and keeping his word because trying to be a hero for someone and then not coming through um, is a recipe for disaster, especially when you promise five things but only do one. I think what has happened is that they've been in a relationship quite a while and he winds up getting overwhelmed or getting in over his head. But it makes him look bad. And 
then when it comes to him wanting his needs met in the relationship, either emotionally from support because he you know, wants pats on the back for things that he accomplishes, but then doesn't forget that he's broken several other promises. And these are the kinds of things that become relationship upsets. And if you're one of those kind of guys that does it or a gal, uh, you know, you can have a same sex relationship. If you're one of those kinds of individuals, well, that's going to break down the communication. And I have found more often than not when there's a breakdown in communication, it affects the sex. Now, so that there's no breakdown in our communication, you're going to listen to a couple of messages and I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. You want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do. All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast, The Sex Edition. I'm your host, John Johnson. And I'm going to talk about this subject here, HPV, the human papillomavirus. Now, I'm bringing this topic up because there was a young man who's in my family. He's a you know, teenager. And one of the things that I was interested to learn is that whereas they give young ladies the an inoculation for HPV, and that's to help prevent um, uh, cancers later on in life, they give young men the same inoculation and they can get that to help them help prevent them from getting the HPV, which would be the herpes virus and things like that. I, in which I was fascinated to learn that. Now, obviously they didn't have something like that available for me when I was a lot younger, but it's interesting to note that because many people, and they say about 70% of the population actually has the herpes virus in some form. They just don't know it. For some people, they deal with constant outbreaks. And there's medications that you can get that can help alleviate some of the symptoms. But the idea that there is an act, there's actually a vaccine that you can be given that will help prevent you from having the outbreaks is, is fascinating. And if you don't have that information, it's something that you can definitely talk with your health care provider about. And, again, go the extra step if you're a young man. And particularly if you're young and you've not been sexually active, this is definitely something that you're going to want. I mean, I don't know that you can do much about it after you've been sexually active if you've been infected. That's something you'll have to talk to a healthcare professional about. But I am uh, haven't had a chance to research it to that degree, and I would love to talk to somebody about that. And I will, I will do that and try to follow up with that information on another episode. But it is the idea that, number one, the herpes virus – Many, 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 many people have. And there, so the conversation would be, okay, how do we protect ourselves from it? And safe sex, not having sex when you're having an outbreak, and safe sex meaning men wearing condoms, and not having a um, sex when there's an outbreak, because then that means you're most likely to have the possibility of passing it on to your partner. And... It's a conversation that when people first meet, some people are very honest about the fact that they have been infected and they learn how to to manage the symptoms and learn not to be sexual when there's an outbreak because of the likelihood of passing it to your partner. And in particular, if you have a partner that is not infected, then that's something you want to protect against. 
So having an open and honest conversation about that could be very touchy because some people get very afraid when that topic comes up because of, because of the implication, because of the shame around it. And, you know, when we bury things and in the darkness and don't discuss it, then we can't get to the facts and it makes it very, very difficult to, to be vulnerable in, in those circumstances. But back to the topic of what to do and understanding that being sexually active means that you also have to exercise a great deal of responsibility. Now that could be very difficult to do in the moment. So you create some boundaries for yourself and do that so that number one, you protect yourself as well as your partner or potential future partner. And so, you know, you can be tested to find out if you happen to have HPV. So just like you can test for AIDS, you can test for, for lots of other things. You can test for this as well. And they will tell you specifically what you have. So if there's a question and you know, this is a new relationship, just like, you know, many years ago, there were people were really, really, really specific about having AIDS tests and sharing the results with your partner. Now that we've come a long way in dealing with that particular thing, dealing with AIDS, a lot of that talk has gone underground, meaning uh, it's not on the surface like it used to be because we've obviously learned to deal with lots of other problems. Well, I think new partners learn that when we have conversations about these kinds of things, we can do it in an adult way. It is not about shaming or anything like that, but it's really about being upfront and then deciding for yourself about, you know, is this going to be a monogamous relationship? And if it isn't, then we really have to think about the, the risks that we run of it not being monogamous. And if it's polyamorous where there's other people that may be involved, then everyone is going to have to be on the same page with that. But that's, but here's the honesty. We can, we can test for it. We can share the results. We can be open about that and then create some expectations and some boundaries around how we are going to behave. But definitely this topic of discussing if you, you know, discussing safe sex, it's still very important. It's very relevant because one of the things that we have seen in recent times is we've seen an uptick in the number of diseases and things that we at one time thought were cured measles in particular. We've seen lots of outbreaks and that specifically has been indexed to people not being vaccinated. That that's what the healthcare professionals are saying. And to that end, now that there is a vaccine that young men and women can take to help prevent them from catching uh, HPV, something that's preventable. That's great. As well as protected sex that that will help to a large degree, but that, but understand that you can have an outbreak on your body in places other than your genitals, which then makes it something that you can transmit to another individual. So therefore being careful, being selective, monitoring yourself, all of these are important, but back to the point of there are things that are showing up now, which now goes back to why we should be cautious, why we should be in these conversations and do these things before we become really sexually involved with someone. Because usually in the heat of the moment, people are not thinking about that. The mind just totally wants to shut all of that stuff off and be passionate and enjoy the moment. So I I would imagine that if you're listening to this podcast, you have some sort of electronic media where you can do a little bit of your own research so that you can educate yourself as to what, Things like syphilis and chlamydia and gonorrhea and and herpes virus looks like so that if you happen upon these things, then you know that there's a course of action that you can take. You can go see a healthcare professional. They will take care of you. They respect your privacy. They respect your dignity. It is not about shaming people. It is about getting you treated. And I think what happens to us is we tend to feel like, oops, I should have known better. And we probably should have, but we're not going to go there and shame you. We want to get you help, get you treated. Because if you continue to ignore symptoms, especially those that, and then let's say you actually have it, you know, you may think you have it and you're worried. You can allay your concerns 
by getting tested. And sure, there's probably going to be a huge sigh of relief when you realize that you are not infected. But if you are, then you need to get treated. The sooner, the better. Because there are a lot of consequences for those who don't. Again, you can read up about it. I won't take up a lot of your time explaining those things, but you can read up about it. There's tons and tons and tons of information out there. Look, I'm looking at my clock. I have to take a commercial break here, but I'm going to come back later and I will wrap up this particular episode. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Download the GSMC Travel Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. to Gold Estate Media Concepts Relationships Podcast, the sex edition. And that last segment, I talked about getting tested and getting the results so that you could at least know with some degree of certainty where you stand. If you're getting in a new sexual relationship, you want to have that information so you can share that with your partner and you both know what your baseline is. And if you're wor- worried about having something, like I say, you get tested. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of things that they can do for you. So, and then it dawned on me, let me talk about this for a second. What if you find out you have something now you are going to go through a shock. I mean, it's one thing to be worried about it, but when you get the results that say, Hey, you have chlamydia or you have gonorrhea or you have syphilis or you have HPV, something, then you're going to have to be present to what this actually means. Now, if you have like syphilis, gonorrhea, uh, chlamydia, you're going to be thinking about, okay, when did I contract this and who might I have exposed to this sort of thing? Because you got to be in conversation with them. Now the healthcare professionals are going to be asking you the same questions, but I'm, I'm posing this so that you think about why you take precautions in the first place. Yeah. It's going to be embarrassing. It could be a bit humiliating. And you know, all of those things aside, I think is really the shock of realizing that you have something and you have to deal with it because this is, this is like a medical emergency here. We, we don't get to play around with these things because these things have consequences that you otherwise will have to deal with if you try to go into denial. And a lot of people do, unfortunately, and it's probably because of shame. They probably have been told what to do. They didn't take that directive, but they went out and did something that, now has come back to well, it's resurfaced in a way that and not a good way. And yeah, that is a lot to face. And if you're a young person and you're facing this kind of thing, you're probably very afraid, but realize that the medical health professionals are there to help you. Now, I don't necessarily suggest you talk about this to just anybody. You got to talk to somebody you can trust, somebody that's going to give you some good advice. Because if you tell somebody and they start shaming you for it, you're probably just going to crater. And that means fall apart when you really need help. So the healthcare professionals, if you're a kid who's in school, whether you're college, high school, middle school, 
um, elementary school if, if you're being sexually active, but I just want to, you can talk to a counselor. They can point you uh, in the right direction. Or the, a lot of these places still have uh, nurses who work in the, in the facility. And you, you do have a great deal of privacy that is afforded to you when you're talking about these medical issues. Um, and, you know, I don't want to talk about the humiliation part of this because that tends to make people want to not deal with it. So I can't overemphasize that this, these things are treatable. We can deal with these kinds of things, but it's also going to require you being really honest. And if you haven't been that, this is a result of that. You're going to have to grow up real fast. So I encourage you that if you are in that place of experiencing this, then you're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with it. And there are people that want to help you in the best way. Now, I want to pivot to something and talk about sex in a very fun, interesting, lighthearted way. And it is to say, I, I know who my target audience is. My executive producer explains that to me. So I have these conversations around, you know, the target audience so that they can listen to it and hopefully talk to their friends and then get everyone to listen to this podcast. But here is something that I want to share with the women who listen to the podcast. And it is this. Women who are, say, in their late 20s, early 30s, you know, women who would be in childbearing age, and obviously they can enjoy sex as much as the next person can, and I hope you are. If you are having issues with enjoying sex, and it's a medical issue, it's a mo an emotional issue, there are counselors there, there are doctors there, they, will, they can talk about this to no end, and they do want to help you. But to those people, to those men and or women who wonder about sex as they get older, what that's going to be like. Well, let me give you an illustration of someone that I've talked to personally. And throughout her marriage, she was married a number of years. The sex itself was, you know, in the beginning of the marriage, it was great. It was spontaneous. It's what they enjoyed. They both. They had kids, and then as the relationship wore on, and I can tell you that the sex part, when the relationship's not going well, a lot of times it will affect the sex because it's the emotional chemistry supports having a really good physical relationship. And it this is how it reflected in the, these uh, this particular couple that I'm that I'm discussing. Well, that relation, that marriage ended after a number of years and not, not because of the sex that was merely a symptom of things going bad. But this lady that I'm talking about had finally resigned herself to probably never really enjoying sex again, at least to the extent that she had imagined it would be and everything that she had read about it. Well, she is, I would, she's in her early sixties. And she explained that she has a partner now that has made her feel alive again. And her libido is off the charts. And she explained ex specifically that her partner, the man, has really made her feel special. And she was happy to experience the fact that being an older woman, and, and I do, do that in quotes because I don't mean old as in OLD, an old person, but older in her years of experiencing life, a lot of people expected that their sex does not get any better, but she is a living example of that. It does get better. And lots of women report the same kind of thing. She has been in a conversation with them and she's excited about that. So if you wonder about your, your sex life as you get older, what happens to it? Because there are women that, have decreased desire um, and there are medical reasons as to why they don't perform sex the way they did. It could be vaginal dryness. Um, it, there could be some, just some beliefs about that after you reach a certain age that you don't have sex anymore. I encourage you to challenge those beliefs. And if there's a little bit of you that wants to be physically intimate with your partner, then try it out. And if there's a medical thing that you are facing, a lot of women don't realize that you can go to your doctor. And if it's a hormonal issue, they can test you for that. If there's lubrication that you need so that it's not so painful, they can test you for that. 
or, or, or excuse me, prescribe something for that. But there are answers to these and sex can be enjoyable well into your seventies and, and beyond. Now I know that statistically I've actually talked to people that have been in long-term relationships, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, and they're still enjoying a, a, a healthy, robust sex life. So it's out there and avail yourself of it the best that you can. I'm John Johnson. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Relationships Podcast. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast, part of the GSNC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsncpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Sex Podcast.